What's going on guys, it's Webb, back with another video for you today. In this video we will be going over the five rules of design composition. If you do end up liking it, please hit that like button. Comment below anything that you would want to see in the next video. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe and turn on that notification bell for every time I post. Okay, so before we get into the rules, I just want to make sure you know what composition is. And composition is how you place or arrange your visual elements on a page that form to make one piece. As you can see over here, I made a little example for y'all. So it's just everything that was in your piece that formed to make one. So all each different element, you had this rectangle, then this one, then this one, then this one, that all combined to make one big rectangle. So it's everything that goes in one piece is your composition. Starting off with rule number one, creating a focal point. So a focal point is what attracts the viewer's eyes to the most important piece um, when they first open or first look at the piece. So for example, in this one, most of you probably either looked at this first or you looked at this, um, but the focal point was to be this. And as you can see, you definitely saw this before this. At least I would think so. So the main point, it's bigger, it's got a different color to stand out from the rest of the page, so it's automatically attracting the viewer's eyes to this piece. And the last thing they're probably going to look at is this, and it's not important. We have it off to the side, we have it smaller, and we have the same kind of color as the title page. Um, and it doesn't really stand out, it's just, just there. Um, but this, the hello circle, it does stand out, and it's something that's going to attract the, the viewer's eyes. So whenever you're making a piece and you want the center of attention to be on one thing, make sure to make it stand out, whether it be through size, color, whatever it may be, um, just make sure to make it stand out and to automatically attract the viewer's eyes. Okay, so rule number two, we have creating contrast. Contrast is going to be your difference between two or more elements in a composition. What contrast does is help your elements stand out. So the more differences that you have in a piece, the more contrast that you will have. So if we look at the example down here with the girl and the wall behind her, you see that the wall goes from a red to white, but she has a shirt that goes from white, and then pants that go to red. The artist that did this, whoever it may be, they did it to make the girl stand out. You see, if she had a red shirt and then white pants, she's just going to blend in with the background or the surrounding environment, and you don't want that. The whole point of contrast, remember, is to help your elements stand out. So it's always important to make sure that you do have contrast in your piece, or else it could come off as boring to the viewer. Rule number three, you want to build hierarchy. Hierarchy is what identifies order of importance in your design. So if we look at this example down here, this is no hierarchy at all. Okay? That's why I have before here. Okay? So if we look, Jane Smith, and then her website, her number, or email. It all looks the same. There's nothing that stands out to you when you're reading this. If we go to the next thing, what's the first thing that stands out? Her name. And so, assuming that's what she wanted to stand out, she did a good job. Okay, so, hierarchy, you want to make things stand out in the order that you want to have them seen. Okay, so, remember in this one? Nothing stood out. This one, she wanted her name to be noticed first, so she made a stand out compared to the rest of the other text. Number four, you want to create balance. Balance in design will cover how the visual weight of elements are balanced with each other on both sides of the design to create cohesiveness, completion, and satisfaction. Now, there's two types of balances that you can have. You can have asymmetrical balance, right here, or symmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance occurs when equal weights are on equal sides of a composition. Okay? So it's balanced around a center or an axis, if you will. And normally, with symmetrical, you're going to have things that mirror each other. If we drew a line, right? I was to go here, draw a line as close as I can between the middle. Both of these sides are the exact same. Now, if I go to asymmetrical and draw a line, these sides do not mirror each other. 
So the difference when you're talking about asymmetrical is asymmetrical uh, balance results from unequal visual weight on each side of the composition. So sides can be different, um, and one side may contain a more dominant element than another side. That's going to be your difference between symmetrical and asymmetrical. Symmetrical is what's most widely used because it is easier to use. Um, downside of it, though, uh, it has been said to, it, that it can get boring. So you do want to try to mix it up with asymmetrical balance sometimes. So really take a lot of time to practice with this one. Uh, it is harder to learn, but you definitely can do it. It just takes a little bit of dedication. Okay, so the fifth and final rule that we have is repetition. Repetition is simply reusing the same or similar elements throughout your design. So down here, I have two similar pieces. They're both from a project that I did for Misfits Gaming. It was an unofficial project that I did for practice. You'll notice in here that there's a lot of similarities. You have this halftone brush that's used as a texture that's going uh, around the edges of each piece. You have the same typography, you have the secondary font which was a script based font, and you have the sans serif font as the primary font. Right? You have these X's, these little X brushes that were used as accents. That's better. Um, you have the sponsors center aligned. And then you also have these this winding circular brush that goes around and it's used as a background texture. Those are just a few of the similarities. Um, there may be more, but you'll notice that if I was to take off this logo, right, if I was just just hide the logo uh, for the people that did know the team, if this was to be posted anywhere, people would be able to tell, you know, maybe not the team, but they're able to tell that this is for the same brand, organization, company, whatever it may be, because of the repetition in it. So repetition is very important for showing similarities and to making uh, a whole project relate to each other and stand out. Um, so that's why repetition is good. That's why it's important. So always try to uh, include that if you have a design with multiple pages, multiple pieces, whatever it may be. That's all for this video today. If you did enjoy it, please go ahead and hit that like button if you, if you haven't already. Uh, comment what you would want to see next, like I said in the beginning of the video. And if you feel like it, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.